Yo, what's going on guys, and welcome back to episode 46 of the New World Iron Man series. In the last episode, we ended getting our great sword to 600 expertise, finally upgrading this stone hewer to 625 with some umbral shards, and running M10 Lazarus with it, and it has been a blast. Right now, I'm in a lobby recruiting for another run. We'll probably start this episode off with like 5 or 10 more runs, and hopefully by that time we'll have some mats saved up and we can craft some more life staffs. I still have 81 Night Vale Lifestaff patterns. I know my best in slot is hiding in there somewhere. Oh yeah, we got two bonus glittering ebony. We're doing some Lifestaff rolls right now. Forget it. Let me just do my other cooldown mats. And then I think we have enough materials for two Lifestaff rolls. Oh, I have to put my weaving set on. Hold on. Looks like we've got 15 glittering ebony. We just need one more to do a double Lifestaff roll. So we're going to extract one from the infused engineering fragments. Of course, I try not to do this because obviously 250 Azoth to convert this is a pretty steep cost when you can't buy vials of Azoth, but when I'm impatient like this, it's always a nice backup plan. Now is today the day we get our best in slot life staff? We can roll two more, 600 gear score, focus blessed, I just need refreshing move in either mending protection or fortifying sacred ground. <sighs> no, no, not even close. Ooh, we're having bad luck with these. Oh well, we still have like 80 patterns, I'm sure we'll get it. Looks like when I turn in this quest, I'm going to be capped on faction tokens, so that means it's time to spend a few. The only question is, do I buy yet another Grand Rune of Holding, or do I buy this Writ of Adventure? I don't think I will need these anytime soon, but you can only buy one per day. Pretty sure you can buy as many of these as you're able to afford, so I'll get the Writ of Adventure. I guess... One day in the future, I'll be glad that I have it. We already have enough Grand Runes of Holding. We're currently up to 12. Okay, I think we're good. <laughs> oh, Crystalline Greatsword! This could be good. I'm hoping for one with Bane and some sort of lifesteal. Either Trenchant Recovery or Leeching Crosscut. No, this is a really good all-purpose damage sword, though. I'm gonna keep that. That's nice. Got a bone rock great sword. This is by default ancient bane, and I don't know the weapon perk, but let's see what we got. Oh, good god, that's a nice great sword. Skyward nullification kind of sucks because I don't use Skyward slash. Link that to the chat because actually someone, someone actually got that as well. But their third perk was kind. I rolled thwarting strikes on my first one. Oh, we got the healthy toast roll on the instrumentality earrings. Too bad they suck. Nice, and we got a hat with corruption resistance, which on the surface looks pretty useless, but I'm not sure if it's still the case, but at least at Brimstone release, corruption resistance also counted as acid resistance. So this was the last piece of the corruption resistance set that I was missing because I usually scrap gear with it, but now it kind of has a purpose, so I've been trying to hang on to the ones that I do notice. And this is the last piece for the set. So with the full set times five, it's about 70 extra points of acid resistance, if it still works. Oh, and we got the Chartist headdress. Okay, there was a lot more going on in that run than I thought. Dude, this is the full Chartist set. I'm pretty sure we have all the pieces now. One kind of cool thing about how they reworked mutations is you have to harvest the resources in the dungeon four points now. So you're no longer the leech if you're going for the Oracalcum node. Although, eh, I kind of have mixed feelings about it because it is annoying to gather them all every single dungeon. You need 60,000 points to get gold and it is pretty hard to get gold now. You have to do like everything perfect, mine every resource, even a single death is minus 500 points which on a 6x multiplier is taking 3,000 off your final score. So while it is really hard to get gold, I do get more resources so. Overall I'm indifferent about how they rebalance mutations, I think it's cool but I just feel bad for the people who don't have M10 gold unlocked already because I feel like it's going to be a huge pain to climb that ladder now. We finally got a bone rot buckler. Oh my god, this is a round shield with Ancient Bane on it. I haven't had a single one since we got in here. Let me check out the random third perk on it. Vicious! Yes, dude. Oh, that's such a good DPS shield. You guys have no idea. I might have to try that out. Although shield gear score does matter now, so if I were to use it, I would have to upgrade it. But that's our first shield with Ancient Bane on the account. And I do already have a sword in the bank with Ancient Bane and Rogue. So we, in theory, have an insane sword and shield DPS setup that we can use here. Especially since they removed the slash resistance that all these ancient mobs had. Alright, let's see if this is gold because we did it perfectly. Finally, we got a gold. Dude, I'm not joking. You have to do literally everything perfect to get gold. 
you can't just run through like in the old days. You gotta mine every node. Can't have like a single person go down. I was just dumping all my timeless shards and stuff in my Morningdale storage, which is where I hold all of my junk. Look at this, it's just insane amounts of items. We need like a book that can hold all these music pages or something. But we managed to get our first great sword shard that run. I didn't even notice it. Oh yeah, back to back gold. It's actually not that hard to get gold if you have like a team where everybody knows what to do, but in Publix, dude, good luck. Oh, I was just opening these real quick, but we got a legend, why was that fire staff green? But we got a legendary blunderbuss, let's go check it out. Ooh, that's actually really good from a gypsum cast, man. I already have one with Vorpal instead of Keen, I think I prefer that. Dang, but this is actually decent, hold on. I'm gonna keep that blunderbuss. Dang it, dude, 13 more pounds gone. Storage is becoming a big problem. Wait, why does it say it's an Orichalcum blunderbuss? I thought they fixed this bug like months ago. This is how it was on release. From Gypsum Cast, it would give you an Orichalcum blunderbuss. And in that case, I think I'm actually gonna scrap it because it might give me Asmodium. Okay, well, they, they thought that out. They just didn't change the name. Crag of Nerd, we actually got, we killed one of the Colossus here and we got the unique Warhammer. I wonder if it's any good. It's a tank Warhammer. Eh, Path of Destiny and Trenchant Strikes, not the greatest, I'll be honest. I don't think Path of Destiny is talent compatible. I'll stick with my Entertainer's Mall, personally. Recipe Gromolata Tenderloin, that's gotta be a new one, man, come on. That sounds new, I, I don't recall ever hearing that one in my life. Yes, 40 con by 60 minutes, oh my god. We, we just got the best recipe in the entire game, dude. <gasps> Whoa, that's gotta be expensive. I mean, I can't trade, so I don't care, but I've seen even the bad recipes, the new ones that are bad, like the focus ones, they still go for like 10K. This has to be like a 50K plus recipe. Actually, you know what? While I still have you guys here in this clip, we're gonna learn it. Gromolata Tenderloin. I don't know what that first word is, man. That's not a real word. They're making things up. I still can't believe we just got the constitution recipe. I have to see the ingredients on that. I don't remember the first word, but I do remember tenderloin. Gremolata. There we go. Okay, so we need the enriched red meat. I can get that from scorpions pretty easily. Lemon, nut, honey, peppercorn, and parsley. And some fish sauce? That can't be that hard to make. What do you need for fish sauce? Fish row. I'm assuming that's a new gatherable from fish. Delicate fish fillet, fish oil, and seasoning blend. This doesn't look that difficult. For 40 con food that lasts an hour? Are you kidding me? You know, I think I would like to find out how hard it is to actually make this constitution food. Of course, when you just look at a list of ingredients, it looks very simple to make, but I don't know the drop rates of any of these materials, especially the new ones. So what we're gonna find out first is how hard it is to get fish row. I've put on my three pieces of the Ventral Fisherman set, we got our tier five fishing pole from the Summer Medley Fair, and we came to a tier one hotspot because we need either sturgeons or paddlefish. I think sturgeons would be a lot easier to get and those come from tier one hotspots. I'm down here in first light because it's a really nice fishing spot I found on the Wikipedia. There's two tier one hotspots right next to each other, so I should be able to just bounce between them with not much waiting time. But yeah, like I said, I have no idea the rarity of fish row. I don't even know how common it is to get sturgeons. Heck, I can't even land on this hotspot. Oh, that kind of looks like a sturgeon. Medium sturgeon, first cast. Okay, maybe this isn't gonna be so terrible. All right, here's the final fish of the tier one hotspot. We still have the other one to get to, but I'd like to see the distribution and how many sturgeons we got on this one. So it looks like in total, two large, two small, and six medium sturgeons. Not bad, that's a total of 10 sturgeons. From now on, when I catch a fish, if it's not a sturgeon, I'm just gonna cut the line, but I caught them all just for the sake of seeing how many we got in total. Looks like in total, we caught 29 fish and 10 were sturgeons, so it's about a 33% chance to get a sturgeon. Now the real question, how much fish row do I get from these? Okay, none so far, but those were the tiny ones. Ah, oh, none from the big ones either. That's tough. Wait. Wait, we didn't get a single fish row? Wow, that's cold, man. That hotspot was like over 15 minutes of fishing and I didn't even get a single fish row, okay. See what I mean? It looks simple on the surface, but just to make one of these meals, that's about half an hour of fishing. Probably not worth it for me, I mean, until the raids come out because they said they wanted those to be borderline impossible. So I'm sure 40 con food would help there, but just for general mutation running, Heck no, am I going to be sitting here fishing for an hour to make like two pieces of food. Just did our daily glittering ebony, didn't happen to get lucky with the bonus, but 
I feel my dark gambling side kicking in again, and I think I'm gonna go ahead and extract more glittering ebony by just paying the 250 Azoth fee. We need six more glittering ebony to make two life staffs for the day. Extract another 1,000 Azoth from the vials. Get these last three. That brings us up to 16. We can do two more life staff rolls, although I really shouldn't be doing this every day. I'm definitely gonna run out of Azoth if I keep being irresponsible like this. All right, here we go, guys. Two more life staffs. This is honestly my favorite part of the day. It's like, am I gonna get my best in slot life staff today? Let's see. Less than refreshing moving B Spain. Come on now. Not today. Although I guess this one would have like niche applicational use. This isn't a beast dungeon or something, but I am going to scrap both of these sadly. The hunt continues. And also, sadly, I was wrong about this life staff. This Oriad's anger isn't actually as good as I thought it would be. They changed the mortal perks to now only proc if you get the final hit on the mob. So mortal refreshment will only work if I get the final hit. As a healer, that's never gonna happen so sadly throwing that back in the bank wasted 9k shards on it but we'll go back to our glowing life crystal staff the staff really is pretty damn good ah if mortal refreshment still worked in the old sense this would have been such a good staff but i guess i should have assumed that it didn't work like that considering this was a quest item so i mean my fault i guess that's an easy gold run right there when you find the right team honestly it is still extremely easy to get constant gold runs holy crap guys we just got some top tier gloves i gotta show them to you while the mobs run here no jump down look at these gloves man freedom enfeebling skewer and resilient strength con you know i gotta say it is pretty nice passively stocking up on star metal in here like look at how many points i get for this node 400 points for mining that. You cannot skip these nodes if you want to get gold. You literally have to gather them all. Ooh, check out these pants we got, guys. Guardian flanker pants of the sage. Pure focus light leg wear with resilient and fortifying sacred ground. I would gladly give up shirking energy to use these in a PvP scenario. This is my first actually decent piece of PvP gear with fortifying sacred ground on it. Oh my god, we got a nice hatchet. Holy crap, Corrupted Bane Rogue and Shirking Arcane with Dex and Strength on it. Dude, we got a Corrupted Bane and Rogue Hatchet, finally! With relevant stats, dude, thank god. And the Shirking Perk's okay, you know, I'm not a big fan of Shirking Perks, but they do add a little bit of damage over time. And we finally got another PvE piece of armor. This Archaic Hat of the Ranger, Pure Dexterity, Corrupted Ward. Yeah, sure, I'll be friends with you, this was a great team, but Pure Dexterity, Corrupted Ward, and Empowering Explosive Arrow. There's no real good corrupted dungeon where you should be using a bow. Right now it's just straight up worse if you're using a bow in any of the corrupted dungeons. But if they do ever add one in the future, I'm sure I'll be very happy that I held on to this hat. You know what? Tiny break time from Lazarus. I want to go farm an item that I made a video on, but never went to go farm it myself. First, how the heck do I get out of this city? Alright, I'll just go out this path over here. But there's a boss located just south of the central brimstone sand settlement right down here. And he drops a really nice spear with Ancient Bane and Rogue. So I'd like to go get it. He only has 24,000 health, so it doesn't look that hard to solo. I don't want this spear for Lazarus, but I would like it for when the mutation rotates to the Ennead. I feel like a spear there would do exceptionally well. Oh, he spawns up here, the Keeper of Numb. Well, this is the guy who drops it. Let's see. Didn't happen to get it the first time. Oh, there's a chest over here, though. Well, at least this boss is extremely easy to solo. I may even be able to put on my luck gear. Yeah, honestly, luck gear works fine. Just make sure you have some healing on your greatsword and you're good to go. I believe just trench and recovery and you're pretty much good to solo any boss you want. Oh, interesting. It does work. If anyone else wants to farm this spear, make sure you stand here and he spawns twice as fast. Obviously, if no one is in the zone, then the boss stands faster, but it's really hard to keep an eye on his spawn from any point outside of the zone. So what I had to do was parkour up these rocks, just hold block, and jump up and you're out of the zone and you can keep an eye on him when he spawns let me just show you guys how to get up this is the route that i take well, it is unfortunate that he spawns within a quest zone because occasionally people will come through obviously doing the quest is not their fault but he does take longer to spawn although it looks like he just respawns so let me get in there. Oh my god, I'm lagging so hard. Oh, this guy actually wasn't doing the quest. He was farming for the spear as well, and he got it on his first kill here. Keen Speed, Rogue, and the third perk is Ancient Bane if you upgrade it. 
Well, congratulations to you and thank you for showing me that it's actually possible to get the drop. I checked the patch notes to make sure this guy wasn't affected by the patch, but you never really know what they're doing behind the scenes. Some bosses just get changed without notice. It looks like we can still get it, so I'll tough it out. Oh, we didn't get the spear, but we did get the spearman's gloves. These are actually pretty decent. He only drops two uniques and this is the other one. Ancient Ward physical aversion, and I think the third perk is either refreshing or refreshing evasion. So these are super solid DPS gloves. Unfortunately, I already 625'd these with Ancient Ward and Lasting Rate of Arrows. I would have 625'd these if I had them, but I already put the shards into these. These are just going to sit in storage shed for eternity. Yes, man, we got it. The Numbs Key Spear. Whew, that only took about two hours, and I would definitely say this is worth two hours. Let's upgrade it to 600. Look at how good that is. Rogue, Ancient Bane, and Keen Speed. And we also got some nice Ancient Ward gloves while we were here. Definitely worth going for. I mean, it's literally right outside of the city. It's not like you have to go out of your way to get this. That is a really, really good weapon. Especially for the final boss of the Ennead. Anyway, I think I'm going to go theorycraft some Ennead spear setups to use this with. I really want to put this to work, man. This thing looks like it can output some big damage. We're going to start next episode off with that. We're going to be ending this one here. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate you all. Leave a like and subscribe before you head off. And the next episode will be up in the usual two or three days. See you guys then.